it's very nice to see you all. Um, I look a little bit different from here. I think COVID has had a bad effect on me. Um, but very nice to see you all. Um, so I just wanted to first of all thank everyone um, for all the people I've met so far. It's just been so nice being out and about, met lots of colleagues, got to know you. So do, I'd love to make uh, contact and connect with other people as well. It's, this is such an extraordinary organization. And I think the Exotic Wedding Planning Conference do such a brilliant job and Exciter. This is really great and I feel quite humbled just coming to, into London from London for the first time, meeting you all and getting that opportunity uh, to chat with you. And everyone's been so warm and friendly. So thank you everyone, first of all, before I start into this talk. So, the science of storytelling. And that's what I'd like to begin with. So I'm gonna just uh, move across to here and I'm just gonna move to uh, a first slide in a second. But what I wanted to uh, give you uh, first was a little bit of an introduction into the world in which I work. Because we not only do weddings, but we also do conferences, we do parties, and we do luxury brand, uh, luxury branding. Um, so I thought the best thing to do would just give you a little one minute film of the introduction to the sort of work I do. So if you could just run the first film. <laughs> So there are two key things that when we start planning an event and putting together the storytelling, and I have two particular things. And the first thing I want to ask you is, what do you remember when you attend an event or you go to a wedding? So I'm going to put that out to you, just as anyone, what, what do you think about? Do you think of a venue? What, what, just give me a thought. What, what is it? What do you want people to remember? Sorry? A beautiful scene, okay, that's lovely too. Uh, exactly, that is my absolute point. It's what you feel. If people feel something, they remember it. If you engage with the senses, everyone remembers that thing. And we apply that to every part of our planning, is getting something that will actually get people to feel. Because yes, they'll have, look, the, the food will be wonderful. The venue will be wonderful. But will they remember that when they walk away? And if you can get them to feel something, then they're going to start a conversation that goes on for the rest of their lives. So that's the first part of my storytelling that we always put together. The second part is, what should you ask? When you get together with your wedding, cli uh, with your wedding clients, or be your party, someone's birthday, or a bar mitzvah, what is the question? that you should ask. What is that question, anyone? What's the question, the first question that you should ask? Anyone? What's important, yeah. Anything more? Okay, 
It's very, very simple. And it's the most important thing in terms of when you start planning an event. The answer is, why? Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to get married? Why do you want to get married? Why do you want to have a party? What is it? Why? When I sit down with clients, I don't just ask that client once I say why. You keep asking the question, why? Why, why do you, what do you want to do? I want to get married. Yeah, you want to get married, but why? Why do you want to get married? We want to be happy. Yes, you want to be happy. What else about the wedding? What are those other things? So we keep pushing and pushing because if you get the right answer, then you're going to plan something with storytelling that's going to be amazing. That people will remember that for the rest of their life. If you get the why question right, the why, 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 why. keep asking that question. Because if you get that right. So I'm going to give you an example. I had a couple uh, from New York who were coming to a venue. And they were coming to the hotel Eden Rock in Cannes. Okay, lovely venue. But why? Why? why what, what's it all about? I kept asking that question. And I finally got to the answer, which was the key element to this party and to this wedding. It was that this couple fell in love seeing a Midsummer Night's Dream. That was the thing that they kept talking about. And then, once I got that thing, they fell in love to Midsummer Night's Dream, I got it. I knew everything else after that was how we were going to put this party together. Because I knew that magically it was the thing that they all loved. And so I'm going to just give you a little bit of an insight into that. So here we are, the Evenwalk Hotel, it's beautiful. But I wanted to bring together a Midsummer Night's Dream into this storytelling, into every touch point during the event. So you've got a, an amazing view. You've got this incredible driveway that leads all the way around. And we're surrounded by, of course, a forest. A Midsummer Night's Dream that takes place in a forest. So what could be better than bringing all of that to life? And if we were to do that, we would take them through a magical forest that we would build and lay out a wedding rehearsal party that would be all the way down the road, all fed in by, we want to come into this world of a Midsummer Night's Dream inside. So that in terms of how the event was stylized, just starting out with the food, that it would give you the feeling that we were going into a magical forest world that everyone could sit in and they would be surrounded by this amazing feeling. And then we would people this world with extraordinary performers who would be hidden in the forest. And during the course of the evening, they would start to come out of the woods and interact with the guests, creating this wonderful, magical sense of extraordinary characters who just populated the situation that you can see. Beautiful costumes that were extraordinary, like A Midsummer Night's Dream. And then we took that into the magical world of things that came alive during the night. So these forests that were either side of the guests and all the way down, suddenly people started emerging out of the forest, hanging from the trees, beautifully just moving and engaging so that this took everyone's dream into their magical world. And the last bit of a Midsummer Night's Dream was in kind of like all came together for me. There was a, a, a wonderful thing I use often called the heliosphere. Does anyone here know what the heliosphere is? You do know? Okay. Heliosphere is a magical effect. It looks like a giant version of the moon. And of course, in Midsummer Night's Dream, takes place on a moonlit night. And so what I wanted to do was bring that surprisingly to the guests. So as everyone was standing there, looking down all the way out, was out of the woods, and all the way down to where the water was, suddenly this huge balloon just took off magically, which we'd hidden over the sea. And then this balloon that you can see here moved all the way up the road until it came to the top and flew down, holding a rose to the bride and groom and gave the bride a rose. Now that's a point of storytelling magic. Everybody in that room remember that moment that they saw that they'd been touched by this rose. And then this uh, heliosphere flew away, drawing the guests down to a party that would take place at the bottom. So you could see them all moving through. So do you see now how this weaving through of the event, of course the food was amazing, the setting was amazing, but this was our skill here in terms 
of storytelling. Um, what I want to do now is move on to uh, another event that I'm actually working on at the moment and how we win our clients in terms of asking that question, why? I'm about to do a party uh, on the Orient Express. Does anyone know the Orient Express? Okay, this amazing train. So, we have taken over the Orient Express for a party going from Paris to Venice. And when I first uh, got together with them, we were trying to come up with this idea. They loved the 1920s, and it was their 40th birthday party, and they wanted to celebrate that. But I needed to bring all that to life. Um, and this is the, one of the ways that we work with my company, and how do we sell that dream? So if you'd just like to play this video, number two. Yeah. is ours. We just tucked all this together, put it together, created a, a story that would create this image of what this event would take place on the train. And they just got it straight away. That's what we want to do. We want exactly that party. Well, in fact, that is what I am going to be doing at the end of this month on the train, uh, which I'm very excited about. It should be a, an extraordinary event to be there. So, I want to come back to this why question. I had another client uh, who was based in America um, who wanted to have a party. And again, we went through this process, this why question. And I kept asking her, why did she want to have a party? This was a 50th birthday party, 300 people, best of, uh, from New York, all her friends. What was it about the party? We spent time just asking over and over again, what is it that you wanted to have for this special party that you wanted to remember? And I finally got to that point. She was uh, an art uh, designer and owner of a gallery. And I kept asking this question. We kept going around and around, and finally I got to it. I said, what, what is, what's your dream? And she said, I wanted to run away to the circus. Ah, oh, OK. A little bit of magic. A circus. OK, now I've got my starting point. A circus. OK, let's see what that looks like. So we're out in the Hamptons. We're in the middle of a field. And nothing exists here before this. So we started to tell, we had started to map out a storyboard of what this might look for people to come to this party and experience a party that would take place where they would be emerged in a circus for one night, only magically that would pop up in the Hamptons and then magically disappear again, having just experienced this extraordinary circus at which she was at the center of that circus. It was a very magical evening, and it became called a soiree dangereuse, which was our um, entry. So everything that you see here was informed by that circus world that we took them into. I think probably the best way is actually showing you. So could you just run that film for me? Thank you. 
about what they want, their dreams are, getting inside their, their moods, the sorts of thing they like. I mean, we all know now that everyone has a, a, a visual reference that they start sharing with you. But it's really to hear what they have, and it's very important also to know if they are the right client for you as well. Don't be afraid sometimes. You can be sitting down with a client, and actually they may not be right for you. Maybe another planner is right, because they'll just make your life hell if they're not the right person. So it's really getting on side with them, that they're going to be sold into your vision, and that you can help them. Because that's, that's what I feel my role is. I want to help your dream. What is it that you're, what you're dreaming about? And by asking those questions over and over to them and share with them. And I think like some of your other cli uh, clients have talk and planners have talked here today, it's making yourself available. I make myself available 24-7, just like everyone else. So you can call me because once I'm logged into you, I'm going to make your dream come true. And that, I think the most important thing is to tell people, we will deliver on your promise. That's what we do, and that's how we've built our reputation. So that conversation is so important. Hi. Yeah. So the question is, can you bring everything? The question is, if you do something similar in a different country, would it be calling the person, because you over, would it be calling the entire team over? Because I've been trying to do that and it was quite uh, Absolutely. No, no, I, I completely understand. So um, a good example was the, of the job we did in New York, um, is that it's very difficult to work in New York. Um, I've been very lucky to uh, get a visa to work there because the kind of work I do is quite unique. And this particular client, in this case, 
wanted to have a vision that this was a circus that wasn't like Cirque du Soleil, it wasn't like a Vegas show, they wanted something that was almost like a European film. So we were, were able to bring most of our team that came in, but we used lots of local suppliers as well, catering, production, everything else. Or for example, when I work uh, abroad, I tend to take a, a core team, so my designer, who will be putting the costumes together, <coughs> our choreographer that we'll be working with, we know where to find that ta talent from, and then work with people who are on the ground. So again, it, it, sometimes it's a balance. Some of our clients are absolutely only want that particular thing, and it's expensive, but they want that thing, so we, we will do that. So it's, it can, it's, we work in both ways. I think my time's up. Is, do we have one more question? Yep, we got one more question on the other side. This is our last question. Take it away. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. I have a question of how long does it take to put together a proposal like this, and how many are on your team working on this proposal? Okay, yeah, perfect. Um, yes, the kind of things that I've been sharing with you, we tend to plan for about a year. So from that initial meeting with the, with the client, sitting down, I'm sure like all of you, it's, a, it's just like a wedding. We tend to, for anything that is elaborate like that, tends to start off um, about a year's out. Um, we have a team back in London, we have about 10 of us in the team um, who uh, work on uh, projects. I tend to lead creatively the whole, the whole company. Um, and then we work with lots of different uh, creatives that we work with on a very regular basis. So that might be, as I said, a choreographer or a dancer, a performer, marquees, caterers, and we bring the perfect team together. Um, I think I probably am out of time now. Listen, it's been such a pleasure to be here, and I do hope I can uh, seek you out later on today so I can connect with you. I've loved meeting with everyone else, but thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you.